people are asking like, what's with all these words, especially out on social media, all these words are coming forth, but the Bible says in first, first Corinthians 14, 29, that we are to judge. It says, let two or three prophets prophesy and let the others judge. And so I want to ask you, um, what, what does that mean? Like, how do we judge um, a prophecy and who does the judging? Well, Age before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in the context of the scripture there, it's talking about it. if a prophet gets up and prophesies and there's two or three others there, and then if they, it says if something's revealed to them, the others should hold their peace, let them speak it. I've been in meetings where that's actually happened. Prophets were ministering, prophesying, and then somebody got a word, go back, and then we've as then after the words came forth, back in the early days, we would actually evaluate and said, okay, what's that saying? What do we think God's saying there? What is it doing? And then should this go public or should this be something private? Is this something just for us to know? And et cetera, et cetera. So it's just like when we train people in the prophetic and they give a word, then we say, okay, in the, early, in the first stages, I uh, remember one of our young men, prophesied to this couple and said, God said, you're going to have a baby. And I talked ta, 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 about a baby. And um, then after we got through, we talked to the couple and said, did you relate to that? And she said, yeah, but except the, the baby, I we, we're, we just lost a baby. We're not planning on having any more babies for a while. So I asked the young man, I said, what did you see and what did you sense when you prophesied that? I, he said, I just heard the word baby. I said, well, when you hear a word like that, you don't go beyond that. Papa says, don't add to or subtract. So I said, if God doesn't give you application and interpretation, because I found over my 68 years of moving in the prophetic that most people that's honest and sincere don't miss it on what they hear. It's when they start thinking, you know, how do I apply that? Or what does that mean? Don't you, you don't try to figure it out. You just speak what God gives you. And if it had just said, uh, I just hear the Lord saying something about a baby. And uh, they were said, yes, we just lost a baby. Then she, he could have prayed for him and comforted him. And so there's so many things like that. You Most people don't miss it on hearing. They miss it on making application or interpretation and trying to put their natural mind to figure out what God's saying. And it it's a, it's, takes faith to prophesy something you have. No, it's like talking in tongues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know how much it relates. I used to ask people, does that relate? Do you relate to that to encourage my faith? Oh, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're, you're prophesying from the spirit, not from the natural mind. And it's all by faith. And so, but, but, but you want to, but I noticed we had to really train them. Do not put your natural mind to try to figure out what God's saying and, and just, just give it. And then, then if you want, you know, it doesn't hurt to talk about it. Say, okay, what does that mean? Oh, and then you, you have application. You've had some experiences like that. Haven't you? Oh, a lot. Yeah. And, and I, I remember this one time that I was uh, prophesying over this couple and I said, I just get the name Daryl. Did, is there somebody in your life that's named Daryl? And the couple looked at me and they went, no. And I went, oh, okay, well, I guess I missed it. I'm sorry. And they went home. And as they pulled into their driveway, their cousin Daryl was sitting on their front porch. And they called me and they said, what was the word for Daryl? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's like, we, we, we definitely know in part and we prophesy in part. I think one of the, the things about judging prophecy is that um, so much of the body of Christ today only relates to the Deuteronomy 18 verse when it comes to 1822 18, analyzing whether or not something is true or false basically on where, where it comes whether it comes to pass but we found through all of our years is that prophecy is partial that means that sometimes we know in part we prophesy in part I wouldn't say sometimes I'd say all the time we know in part we prophesy in part uh, God doesn't give you all the details right. of uh, of the process. Prophecy is always progressive. In other words, God might reveal part now, part later. God gave Abraham, what, eight different 11, prophecies, 11, 11, 11 prophecies in the course of his life. So, so it's partial, it's progressive, and it's always conditional, even if God doesn't say it's conditional. And so, um, for example, giving somebody a prophetic word about their destiny, their purpose, their calling, but then they go back out into the world and live like the devil. Well, that word may not come to pass, but it's not God's fault that it doesn't come to right. pass. And so we have to understand the nature of prophecy in order to actually judge it properly and also how to judge our participation with the prophetic word and how we mix our faith with that word to see it come to pass. So there's a there's a, a co-laborship between God speaking a word, the prophet speaking a word, and the person receiving the word to apply it. Yeah, most people I've found that do not understand the principles of the prophetic. 
uh, and most people don't know how to judge a prophetic because they're that, like that Jane said, if it's all they know is Deuteronomy 18 22. If it comes to pass, it's God. If it's not, the prophet was presumptuous and he should, he should repent and admit he missed it and all that stuff, you know. But uh, there's so many details. There's, I t I'd say there's two mysterious, de complicated things in the New Testament one is speaking in tongues, <laughs> other is prophecy. And there's so many details involved in that reason. I wrote the book on 70 reasons for speaking in tongues, you know, and, but, and that's the reason I wrote the three books on the prophetic because uh, there's so many things you fulfill prophecy, just like you fulfill the scripture and same faith, obedience, submission, and adjustment and, and, and all that stuff. And so uh, when these people jump in and start criticizing and judging prophecy, and they're in, they're in no place to judge. It takes a prophet really to judge a prophet. And um, and I don't think there should ever be like condemnation, especially when, uh, you know, the spirit's so humble and everything. And, and we prophesy according to our faith. So every prophet that's prophesying should be cheered on because it takes faith to prophesy and you're putting a lot at risk. But now if we take that out of a local church setting where there's leaders that can oversee it and we bring it into like social media, for example, then how can we gauge it? Like for example, COVID, because in 2000, 2020, there was a lot of questions brought up about the prophetic. So someone comes on and says, okay, this is March 10th in two weeks, COVID is gonna be absolutely finished. It's not going to, the Lord has shown me it's gonna be finished in two weeks. It's, you know, there's not gonna be any economic ramifications. There's not gonna be deaths. It's not gonna be anything It's finished in two weeks. So then two weeks go by and it's still growing. So now it's Passover and people are prophesying, oh, okay, it's gonna be finished in Passover now. And then it prophesies, okay, now it's gonna be finished in Pentecost. But then one year later, COVID is still growing, okay? So how do we judge that? Then that's when Deuteronomy 18, 22 might come into play, would you think, Bishop? Well, I, I teach people, my prophets, I said, be very stingy on giving times. Only about four scriptures in the places that God give a time. He said, You'll be, Israel will be down in Egypt 400 years. Uh, Israel will be in Babylon for 70 years. Um, you know, there's, there's just a few, and, and I got, had one prophet started going at six months, this, and three months, that, and 10 months, that. I said, and he prophesied over me some of that stuff, and I said, look, it, none of that's really come to pass. I said, and when you put a time zone on it, God, God just doesn't give times, uh, I mean, you know, certain period times. And uh, I've noticed anybody that does that starts missing it on timing. That you, you may have a sense and it's gonna cease, but you got the wrong time. And, and so it's timing is it's so important. And just like they prophesied Trump would have a second term. Well, maybe it was supposed to be it may, it's consecutive and, and something happened, he got mooted, or it might've been none could have happened in 2024. So until all the time possibilities are passed, you can't really judge it for sure until, but when they started putting dates on it, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's when you goof up and- yeah. That is so good. So good. It's a bit presumptuous at that point. Yes. Yeah. 